Hi, today I want to take you on a quick tour of our GWizard G-Code Editor setup facilities. One of the first things you're going to want to do after you get GWizard Editor up and running is to create machine profiles and controller posts that customize GWizard Editor simulator for your particular CNC machines. You access the setup facilities just by going over and clicking on the setup button. That brings up the little setup application and there are a number of tabs here that you use to access the different areas of the program for setting up. First thing to start with is whether you want the user interface of GWizard Editor to display values in metric or imperial. Note that this does not affect the units of your G-Code program. You'll want to use G20 and G21 to set what your program units are. Rather, it controls things like the scale of the grid that you see displayed here. Um, so keep that in mind. Anyway, you can switch back and forth between inches and millimeters. The second thing is uh, our machine profiles. This is very similar to the machine profile screen that you see in our GWizard calculator product. We try to share the code as much as possible between the products. Uh, so you can refer there for a lot of details on the machine profiles. But in essence, what we're trying to do here is tell GWizard what the capabilities of your machine are. So you want to come through and give the profile a name, uh, tell us whether it's a mill or a lathe, depending on which one you set. That controls the type of backplot views you're going to have. For example, your make and model of machine, uh, spindle tapers, RPMs. Uh, the adjustment for the power curve of your spindle used by our feeds and speeds calculations, coolant capabilities for your machine, tool changer capabilities, a lot of information here, things like the tool change time or the spindle time to accelerate from zero to maximum RPM, these are used as we're estimating how long it takes your G-Code program to run. Uh, your maximum feed rates, your maximum rapids rates, the machine's travels, its acceleration capabilities, so on and so forth. When you've made all those changes, hit the Save button. Uh, select again after you've saved the machine profile you want to work with. And then the next thing you'll want to do is to set up the correct CNC controller or post-processor uh, that defines what G-code dialect your machine recognizes. Now every time you get a new release of GWizard Editor, the thing it does as soon as you start up the Setup tab uh, for the first time after a new release is it goes and it gets all of our latest uh, post-processors, uh, downloads them from the cloud. Now you can trigger that yourself by hitting this Download Latest button and it'll go out, collect all the latest uh, controller profiles and bring them down to your machine so you have those available whether you're logged on to the internet or not. Once you've got the latest controllers downloaded, you press the Browse button and use that to select which controller you want to access. We have a number of uh, uh, predefined uh, controllers. Uh, this makes it really fast if your machine is on the list. For example, you have Fanuc Mill, uh, Fanuc uh, Mill Setup for Metric, Haas Lather Mill, Mach 3, Centroid and Bridgeport uh, at this point. We'll be adding new controller uh, profiles constantly, uh, but as I say, start with one. If we don't have your machine, start with the one that you think is going to be closest to your machine. It'll save you some time. Now, if you found the exact uh, controller uh, profile that you need for your machine, you may be done at this point, and you just click the close box, and this will all be saved and taken care of for you. But uh, there can be uh, either a case where you have a machine who we don't have a CAN profile for, and you therefore need to customize, or maybe your profile is set up a little differently. And so to do that, you go over to the Post tab, and you'll have a number of different capabilities, number of different sub-tabs that you can go to in order to customize further the post for your machine's uh, controller. So uh, these are the settings. This is from the Fanuc uh, Zero I Mill Inch Profile. And there are a number of different settings available. For example, 
uh, we're looking at the uh, M98 style here and there are a bunch of different styles you can select this is the editing pane over here you can change this to be whatever you want since this is a a Fanuc profile we've selected uh, uh, this number three uh, uh, style here but there are a bunch of different ones you can control for example whether a colon defines a, a subprogram uh, and can be used interchangeably with the O or not you know does your control allow UVW to provide incremental XYZ values all sorts of different things can your arcs be helical uh, in other words uh, can they change in the depth axis uh, as you go around the arc what's the endpoint tolerance you'll typically get an error uh, if the distance from the center uh, of the arc to each endpoint differs by more than this amount. So lots of different ways you can customize uh, the individual characteristics of your own control. Uh, you can also fully customize how uh, the simulator interprets the different numbers that it encounters. Uh, G-code consists of what are called word and address pairs. The word is actually the letter uh, and the address is the number that's associated with that letter. So for example, uh, we can customize various different letters. We don't provide separate X, Y, Z. We just have it all set up so that if you customize X, Y, and Z follow suit. Um, and for each letter you can come in and say things like whether a plus is required, a minus is allowed, uh, how many digits can appear left of the decimal point, uh, are you required to provide a decimal point or is it optional? How many digits to the right of the decimal point? So on and so forth. Lots of different options here because over the years lots of different controls have worked in different ways. Uh, I'm going to skip errors for now. We'll cover that in a different video. Uh, tool crib is the ability to come through and define a tool crib much the way we do on our feeds and speeds calculator and use that tool crib to provide much more information uh, about what's going on with the tools in your program. We, there's both our uh, tool crib definition, also the tools tab. So the tools tab is where it spells out, you know, T1, T2, these, these definitions in your G code. And you can map these two. So you can say, for example, that uh, T1 is going to be a half inch four flute end mill over here and thereby give GWizard a lot more information about what's happening with your tools. Uh, we'll do a whole video on the tools section. There's a whole page in the documentation on it. We can do all kinds of different things uh, including import and export of uh, data as G code programs uh, so that you can you can manage your tool data. Perhaps you're using a a tool setter or uh, something along these lines uh, and you want to be able to manage the tool data and move it from machine to machine just by loading a G-code program and executing it. Uh, one more tab I want to go over here, that's the files tab. So if you ever want to find where all of this information is being stored, uh, this will tell you the preferences directory, this will tell you where your application is actually installed. Uh, you can back up these values to a new directory uh, and that and that essentially uh, gives you the ability to go and find these files, change them, modify them, delete them, uh, copy them, back them up, whatever you'd like to do. So that's been a quick overview of our uh, setup for your machine profiles, your metric units, and uh, which controller you want to use. Uh, for each machine. As I say, this is going to be one of the things you want to do pretty quickly is get this all set up. Thanks very much.